You! Sir! Thorn! Stop! You stop! Roger! What's in the wind? My sister's honour. That's what. I did not know your sister and honour were acquainted. <laughs> you blackguard! <laughs> Get up, you coward! You, Alexandrina. I'm going to have all the de Courcy cousins. And Beatrice, naturally. And Mary. You must have Mary. Aunt Arabella thinks it very important that all of Augusta's bridesmaids should be of a calibre far above the common hoard. Because the bridegroom isn't. Really, Beatrice? <laughs> Mr. Moffat is... Mr. Moffat is rich. He has no other quality that is visible to the naked eye. His father was a tailor. His father was a tailor? many years ago, before he demonstrated his brilliance of mind. And made a lot of money. Shh, here is Miss Thorne now. You will make a charming picture. We were discussing Miss Gresham's wedding plans. The date is set for the 1st of September. Oh, Augusta, how exciting. Now, who are the bridesmaids to be? Beatrice, of course, and my cousins, the de Courcys. I hope you... I I'm sorry if you... Please don't think of me. I never expected it for a minute. Miss Thorne is much too sensible to have imagined any such thing. It's a lovely time of year for a honeymoon. Where will you go? Mr Moffat talks of Paris. Who ever heard of going to Paris in September? Who ever heard of letting the bridegroom have a say on the matter? Mr Moffat must go where you choose to take him. I'm not so sure. Among ordinary people, the lady will usually have her way, but... Rank has its drawbacks as well as its privileges. I shouldn't mind the drawbacks, but I mightn't be up to the privileges. I'm good to go in. It must be time to dress. Augusta. <laughs> Once more, I've made an enemy of the Lady Alexandrina de Courcy. <laughs> well, it's sad you won't be a bridesmaid. What did Lady Alexandrina mean? But I was too sensible to have imagined it. Why shouldn't I imagine it? There you are, Mama. You've missed Augusta's talk of wedding plans. Mary, I'm afraid it's time for you to run along. Beatrice must get changed. Of course, Lady Arabella. I only looked in on my way home. <laughs> Give my regards to the good doctor. I hope you weren't encouraging this bridesmaid nonsense. She knows she won't be asked. Good. But why not? When she's the oldest friend we any of us have. Because it is my decision. Isn't it enough your sister will be Mrs. Muffet for the rest of her life? I never understand you. If you think so little of her, why is Mary allowed to come here? Because she's been in this house since you were children. Why did you allow it then? These things matter less with children. And your father is fond of Dr. Thorne. Papa always says that the Thorns of Ullathorne Park are quite as good as the Greshams. And if she were a Miss Thorne of Ullathorne, it would be a different matter. But who is Mary Thorne? And how precisely is she related to the family at Ullathorne? She's Dr Thorne's niece, so she must be their cousin. She is called his niece. That is all. And there's the dressing gong. Come along.
Mary? What's the matter? Nothing. I beg to differ. Something's the matter. Why didn't you wait for me? I didn't wait for you because your mother drove me away so Beatrice could dress. Besides, Lady Alexandrina had had enough of me. Don't mind, Alexandrina. You never have. Would you like a ride home? No. You have a dinner to attend, and with all the decorsies to deal with, you'd better not be late. These things are more relaxed in our house. If my aunt gives me one more lecture on whom I should marry, I will not be responsible for my answer. Oh, yes, you will. You'll listen to Lady de Courcy and nod politely. I will never hear the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> But it seems very hard when we both know whom I should marry. What do you mean? I should marry you, of course. Much more of that, and I'll make you call me Miss Thorne. And if you say one more word, I won't be at your party tomorrow night. Now hurry in, or you will be late, and I'll be blamed. You know I'm serious. I know you're young. I'm older than you. But I'm a woman. Uncle, mm. what do you make of this marriage of Augusta? I hope Miss Gresham shall be very happy as Mrs. Moffat. And I, of course. But I don't at all expect it. No? No. I think she degrades herself by marrying a man who she does not care a jot for, who has no breeding and no charm, but only money. Well. So... Would I degrade myself by marrying Mr. Moffat? How can I answer that? I mean, I know where to rank Augusta. What I want to know is where I ought to rank myself. What's brought this on? Something Lady Alexandrina de Courcy said this afternoon. Lady Alexandrina is a spiteful cat. Whatever she says, I wouldn't give it one scrap of attention. Be honest with me, Uncle. Tell me first, am I a thorn? Am I, in truth, your niece? You are indeed my niece, the child of my late brother Henry, that I can swear to. But? Mary, I would spare you this if you'd let me. I've already been spared for many long years. Too many. Very well, if you're determined. So be it. Your mother was a village girl. And as you've already guessed, she was not my brother's wife. Is she still living? I believe so. In Australia, she married and has a family there. But she did not want me. She wanted you very much. But her husband made it a condition that she leave you behind and start a new life with him. It was her chance and she took it. My father didn't want me either. We'll never know. He died before your birth. Your mother came to me with her dilemma and I offered you a home. But that's wrong. It's you that have made a home for me for 20 happy years. It's 
So I am not a thorn above a thorn. To me, you are my daughter. And any man who has the honor of your love should be the envy of the world. you know what flirting is. There's nothing very terrible in it that I can see. Have you noticed this flirting before now? Frank and Mary have always been very close. You know that. <sighs> Maybe. But being close at 12 is a very different thing from being close at 20. Anyway, I thought you should know. Mm, quite right, my dear. Honesty is the grounding of a healthy life. Now, Mr Moffat is not yet down. Go back to your room, wait a few minutes, and then make an entrance. Frank is coming of age. You cannot avoid this. You will not spoil Frank's part. It is your responsibility to ensure the future of the estate. How can I order Frank to do anything when it is my folly that is the cause of our discomfort? I'll speak to him. And what good will that do? You have already spoken to him many times. Really, Mr. Gresham? I hope our difficulties have not consumed your manners as well as your fortune. I just don't see how Lady de Courcy can influence Frank to do something which he must find repugnant. I will explain it is his duty to his parents, to his family, and to the line from which he is sprung. To marry money. That's it. To marry money. When I was a child, my father owned everything you could see from this window. Kings Hill is gone and Whitehaven. And that ridge to the right forms part of the Boxhall Hill estate. Which you sold to the railway man. Which I sold to Sir Roger Scatcherd, yes. I thought it would fund me for 30 years or more. Ten years later and every penny is gone. I do hope Mr. Gresham doesn't imagine we can come to his aid. No, indeed. Mr. Moffat. Ah, Mr. Moffat. I do not think you've met my brother, Lord de Courcy. Good afternoon. How do you do? Mm. And Lady de Courcy, may I present Mr. Moffat? Here comes the lover, sighing like furnace with a woeful ballad made to his mistress, Ivra. I'm sorry? The Lover, from Shakespeare's Seven Ages of Man. Why would he write about her eyebrow? I understand you are to be elected for the seat, including Corsi Castle. Well, I am to stand for election. It is not quite the same. Then you must stay while you are canvassing. We will invite Augusta and Frank and make up a party to support your efforts. Me? Come to stay at Corsi Castle? Yes. We should be delighted. I do hope there is a great deal of money involved. There is, but they're demanding a crippling settlement from us. If he is as rich as you say, pay it. Think of it as an investment. And I will speak to Frank after dinner. Not this again. Beatrice, no. Can I not comfort my own brother? Leave it to your aunt. Frank, don't be a baby. You know well enough there is nothing else that will save the situation. Except for me to marry money. And how is that to be brought about? Have you heard of Miss Dunstable? Isn't she the American whose father sold oil of Lebanon? Oh, he sold so very much of it. Her fortune is immense. I suppose it must be. Why is she in England? The very point. Why would she be in England if not to find a husband? She is coming to stay at Corsi. I want you to be there to meet her. I'm studying for my degree and... Oh, fiddle faddle. What do I care for degrees when we are trying to settle your whole life? How old is she? 
What difference does that make? 30, perhaps, or 35. 30 or 35? I will not remind you of the beggar's power of choice. I will come to Corsi, aunt, but I can promise nothing more than that. Well done, Augusta. I do not see how it could be achieved without great awkwardness. We cannot allow a little awkwardness to put our only son in peril. But the children are devoted to Mary. I'm very fond of her myself. Frank is too fond of her. Too fond for our own good if he is to marry a fortune. Do you deny it? Tell Dr. Thorne to keep Mary away from Greshamsbury until Frank finds a wife. That is all. You overlook one thing. Sir Roger Scatcherd has made Dr. Thorne his man of business, certainly where my debts are concerned. Thorne has negotiated terms for me that I would not get anywhere else in the county. And is that a reason to throw away your son? You are not being reasonable. Oh, of course not. When did you ever think me reasonable? I see I shall have to unravel the damage you have made, but then again, why not? I'm quite used to it. I want no trouble tomorrow evening. You will not spoil Frank's party. Drinking? He's got that winter bones with him, writing and writing and doing his business. Oh, please send him away. If I send winter bones away, will you keep the drink away? That's not all. They came to ask him to run for election. Who came? The local liberals, I suppose. They think Sir Roger is a big man and might catch the fancy of the town. He is a big man. Too big for such tomfoolery. Well, well, Dr. Thorne, you smelt me out. Come for your fee, eh? Glad if you're feeling better, Scatcherd. Better than what? I've never felt so well in my life. Indeed you ain't. That's a lie. And Winterbones has no place here, scribbling away, stinking of gin. Mr. Winterbones should go back to London. Lady Scatcherd can be clerk for the time being. Winterbones will do no such thing, so there's an end to that. Now, Doctor, don't let him talk in that way. Don't. You can go downstairs. Go, now. Go on. <laughs> Stay there till I call you, hear me? for a moment. Mr. Gresham asked for another loan on the Greshamsbury estate. Is there any part of that left that I do not already own? I believe so. Shall we agree to it? We? Not your decision to make. It's mine. <laughs> must do without the stimulus of drink. Who says I drink? Me? Eh? Now, what's this nonsense I hear about you electioneering? They want me to stand against the Gresham's candidate, Mr. Moffat. Your system couldn't stand it. Yeah, well, I dare say that's true, but uh, what gives you the right to lecture me? Eh? I mean, what have you ever done that I should listen? 
I have not made my mark in public life. I've built no railways. I have neither fortune or title, but I have some skill in saving lives. <laughs> of course, <laughs> if you've lost confidence. I've got no confidence in you. Get a specialist from London, then, and keep away from the brandy until he comes. <laughs> Winter bones. You're to come back in. Who asked me to? Sir Roger. Why did you bring me back up here? To tell you I've made a will. You already have a will, and I'm an executor. You were one of two executors. Now, <laughs> you will be alone. Are the provisions the same for Lady Scattered and Louis? Uh, not quite. My wife will be looked after, but this house, the Greshamsby mortgages, the shares, the money will all go to Louis Philippe. What, all of it? And as it is, Louis Philippe can have Greshamsbury if he chose to call in the loans. And what would the great lady Arabella do if he did? She would be sad, and so would I. <sighs> so, you going to the Greshams' ball tonight? I've been invited, yes. I have not. No, no card for me, though I own the walls that support them and the floor they dance on. Yeah, Louis hasn't been asked either, though young Master Frank will dance soon enough to Louis' tune. He'll certainly have a great responsibility to discharge. Now, oh, don't worry about Louis. And there are no other major bequests I shall have to deal with. Not unless Louis dies before his 30, in which case it all goes to my sister's eldest child. What? My sister Anna, you remember? Of course you do. How could I not? You have been very good over the years, Thorne, about not resurrecting that tragedy. I know you're sorry for it. Oh, as sorry as a man can be. But say again, her eldest child, be more specific. Do you mean her eldest son? Have you no name? Well, I know she has a family, but, uh, but names. Boys, the girls, ages out there, they're all lost to me. If it is a girl, so much the better. And if it is, I would hope that you would be of a concern about a husband. Hmm? How have you described them? The eldest child of my sister's body. Cheer up. You may die before me, in which case I'll have to look after your niece and find her husband. Oh, ho ho! <laughs> the Reverend Mr. Oriel and Miss Patience Oriel. How good of you to come, Mr. Oriel. Miss Oriel. I'm only sorry we couldn't accommodate you for dinner. We feel very privileged to be invited. Don't we, Patience? Indeed, we do. <laughs> well, please. Mm. It is nice to have a gentleman vicar again. I never felt poor Trump was quite up to the mark. His sister is a pretty girl. And I gather she has money. Not enough for our purposes. A nice-ish looking nag your father got you this morning. I was taking a look at him before dinner. He's a monsoon, isn't he? Uh, indeed he is. Do you remember Lady Arabella's nephew, Lord Porlock? My lord, I haven't seen you since you were a boy. Well, it was a good ten years ago. Where's Mary? She's outside. Excuse me. Mary, 
Why are you so unkind to me? Indeed, I do not mean to be. Then come and dance. It would not be appropriate. Not appropriate? To dance with the girl I'm going to marry. Let go of me. Please. I will let you go. I will never ask you to marry me again. If you say here and now you do not love me. Frank? Mama's looking for you. You are to open the ball. Good. You shall open it with him. Unless Mr. Moffat would object. So what if he did? But Frank won't want to dance with me. No, I want to dance with... Has Miss Oriel arrived? I believe so. Then ask her to dance. You can't object to that. Not when she's so pretty. Come along, Frank. You haven't asked me about my visit. I suppose Sir Roger was very demanding, as usual. Yes, he was. And yet I am fond of him in some strange way. We've been through a good deal together over the years, what with one thing and another. What things? Things that might have made us enemies, and yet they have not. I thought it was vulgar to be mysterious. So you always tell me. May I have the honor of the next dance? Uh, well, my uncle is very tired. Can the next one be my turn? Uh, I'm afraid Mr. Oriel has just asked me. Do you ever wish we had money? Only so you wouldn't have to tire yourself out by going to places like Boxall Hill. Ah, oh, is that all you want? I wouldn't mind a bonnet, like the one Patience Oriel wore in church. Do you care about bonnets? Well, why shouldn't <laughs> I? Back there, why wouldn't you dance with Frank? How could I accept him when Mr. Oriel had asked first? Was that the only time he asked you? in the whole evening. Uncle, you have told me yourself I'm not worthy of Mr. Gresham. I've told you no such thing. You confuse me with the Lady Arabella. I see. And if you were Lady Arabella, would you be pleased for your only son and heir to marry a nameless Don't bastard? say that word. Not to me. Very well. But you will agree it is harsh to criticize her ladyship for what you would feel yourself. But will he authorise the payment? I should think so. He's in a sour mood at the moment, but he never refuses a loan against this house. Good. Mr. Gresham, it's not good. You owe Scatchard more than three quarters of the value of the estate. And he is changing. I only wish Lady Arabella had seen fit to invite him to the ball. The truth is, he was rather bitter that neither he nor Master Louis had been included. It is a pity that you lost the chance to be good neighbours. The question is, will Louis Scatcher be merciful to me when his hour comes? I cannot say. But if his father insists on running for election, that hour may come sooner than we think. I will leave you now, but I'll return with you. Good day to you. Dr. Thorne! Lady Arabella, good afternoon. Won't you come in here a moment? I'm 
so glad you came here today, but there is something special I want to say to you. Something um, rather particular. You know what respect and esteem and real affection we all have for you, and for Mary also. So I very much hope, dear Doctor, that you won't take amiss what I'm going to say. I'll endeavour not to. Let us not beat about the bush. You know the squire's position when it comes to the property. Indeed, you probably know the sums rather better than I. There has been reckless spending in years gone by, racing and gambling, to say nothing of keeping those noisy hounds for no good reason. All of which means that Frank will inherit a hollow crown. His only hope of retrieving the situation is by marrying money. And worth, Lady Arabella, and a pure heart and youth and beauty. I hope you'll marry them all. Indeed. But there must be money, or Frank will be a ruined man. You would not want that. Certainly not. Good. Because I have heard that things... That is, words have passed between Frank and Mary that should never have been allowed. What things? What words? And who says so? Doctor, there have been lovemakings of a very advanced kind. What took place? Speak out, Lady Arabella. I won't have Mary's conduct impugned by innuendo. What is it that the eavesdroppers have heard? What's the accusation? There has been an offer made. And who made it? Of course, Frank has been imprudent. I don't deny it. There has been fault on both sides, no doubt of it. I do doubt it. I deny it totally. I can assure you an offer was made by Frank, and such an offer cannot be without its allurements. Allurements? All I'm saying is that it would be inexpedient for the young people to be thrown together again just now. Would it? Frank is at Corsi now, and he goes from there to Cambridge. But when he next returns home, perhaps it would be better if... Oh, don't worry. Mary will not set foot among you from this very moment. But it must not change the friendly intercourse between you and this family. The squire would not wish... Not change it? Do you think I would break bread in a house from which my niece has been banished? You have daughters. Would you sit down with me if I'd accuse one of them as you have accused her? Good day to you, madam. Who is that man with Moffat? His agent, Mr. Cossett. He manages Mr. Moffat's campaign. I think you might call him Keith. Don't hurry me. Is he going to win? He says so. But he seems unwilling to explain his views to the voters, which can hardly be sensible. <laughs> What's this? There you are, Frank. Why? Where should I be? Don't be such a quiz. Now, here is Miss Dunstable. She's only just arrived. I shall introduce her. And later, you may take her into dinner. Should I propose tonight? Behave. May I present my nephew, Mr. Gresham? Frank, Miss Dunstable. Come along, Porlock, and help me with the tea. You too, Augusta. Augusta. I hope you're not tired by your journey. Tired? <laughs> Why, in May we came from Rome to Paris without once sleeping in a bed. We were tipped out of the sledge three times coming over the Simplon Pass. I dare say I can manage a train journey from London. I dare say you can. <laughs> Besides, I'm looking forward to discovering my lovers here. Your lovers? Oh, I always have some lovers in pursuit at a large house party. 
Before I leave, I shall receive three proposals at least. Unless I'm mistaken, Lord Porlock is already boiling up to make one of them. Does it surprise you? Not in the least. Do you think me so very fair? Of course. <laughs> Come, Mr. Gresham, we both know it is not my beauty, but my dollars that renders me lovely in their sight. Won't you admit it? <laughs> <laughs> You've heard he's agreed to run against that Mr. Moffat at the Barchester election. Mr. Gresham told me of the plan. When I was last here, Sir Roger thought it was as mad a plan as I did. He wants to put the Gresham's noses out, though I don't know why. Yeah, it's insanity, and I've said as much. He could not find the energy to stand upright at the hustings. He means to do it, though. I, you see the family at Gresham's, would you not, Doctor? Often. How's Master Frank? Master Frank is Master Frank no longer. He is 21 years old and a fine, strapping fellow. You know I was his nurse. I'd forgotten. Between him and Louis, I could not tell you which I love the most. You can be proud of Frank Gresham, I assure you. But for now, help me talk your husband out of his folly and keep him in bed. Oh, Doctor, there's no keeping Sir Roger anywhere he doesn't want to be. I fear it, truly. What's this I hear about you standing for election? I thought we'd agreed it was out of the question. Oh! You mean you don't think I can win? I think you may very well win against Mr. Moffat, but if you do, it may be at the cost of your own life. Well, I have a mind to wipe that smile off the Gresham's faces. <laughs> they don't smile very much these days, I can assure you. To what do I owe this free visit? It's about your will. Well, go on. Your will specifies that your second heir is your sister's eldest child. Only if Louis dies before he's 30, which he will not. I'm sure. But the point is, I know your sister's eldest child. What? You remember my late brother? I remember him till my dying day. Then you must also know that your sister's eldest child was his child too. But our baby died. No. She did not. Anna came to me in prison before she went to Australia and told me that child was dead. Your sister wished to sever any connection between her daughter and you or anyone else so that the girl could grow up in peace and no one know her true identity. But now, I would not have you make her your heir unintentionally, so I thought it right to tell you. Do you see her? I do. And does, does your other niece, Mary, know of her cousin? I don't trumpet it abroad, but Mary knows your sister's daughter well, better than I do. And is my niece a good girl? She's an excellent person in every way. So when can you bring her to meet me? Well, she's very busy. Oh, she's a servant girl, is she? Not exactly, but she does work hard. Well, I must meet her. I mean, I must make peace with my past. I cannot promise it. You cannot stop me, Thorne. Now I know that she's alive, I will find her. And I will tell her who I am, that's my right. Sketched, I'm not your wretched wife. I say you have no rights over that young woman, and I will not be bullied into acquiescence. So have you taken the temperature of Barchester Moffat? Cosset tells me we're on course. Does he indeed? He's not afraid of old Scatchard then? Sir Roger Scatchard's been ill for some time. 
Cossett doesn't think he'll make an appearance, and if he does, it won't be impressive. You will canvas, though, nonetheless. Oh, yes. Cossett's confident he has good canvases. Should have asked Mr. Gresham. He seems to be better than any of us at canvassing. I would not mind Miss Dunstable's vote, you may be sure. Why? Does she have property in Barchester? Mr. Moffat, should we take the time to talk a little of our plans? I really should work on my speech. Of course. If you need any help, I... Mr. Moffat! Come this minute and make up a hand at whist. I hope my enthusiasm excuses my lack of skill, Lady Alexandrina. Not a bit. At your first mistake, I shall wrap you on the knuckles with my fan. You have been warned. <laughs> You know how Alexandrina loves to tease. It doesn't mean anything. Would you like a game of whist? I could recruit Frank. No. Don't disturb him. Leave him to his work. Hmm. Why should Miss Thorne back off from you now? What has changed? My mother is quite against Mary. That is clear. And my father is no match for her. They would rather you marry me. Don't take it as a compliment. If my bride was possessed of 10,000 a year, they wouldn't care if she had horns and a tail. <laughs> well, if you'll take my advice, you'll be true to her. If Greshamsbury is sold, then I must take work as a lumberjack. <laughs> well said. Mary, I've decided it's time that you knew everything. I've told you that your father seduced your mother. I'm afraid there's no other word. When her condition could no longer be concealed, she confessed it to her brother. He was enraged on her behalf. As any decent man would be. He was decent in his way, but he was also strong and violent. And one night, when he was in drink, he came upon my brother and struck a blow that killed him. My father dead at my uncle's hand. Is my birth to encompass every sin? It wasn't his intention, and the court knew it. He went to prison, not for murder, but for manslaughter, and he served 10 years. Is the man who committed the crime still alive? That's why I've chosen to tell you. I heard something about him returning to the neighborhood, and I fear it is in search of you. Do not fear it. He is my mother's brother. He has a right to know me. He could be very rough in those days. If he does contact you, please tell me at once. I will. And to thank you. What for? For showing me that Lady Arabella was even more right than I knew. I am no match for Frank. And never could be. And now, dearest uncle, good night. Mary. Seems I must give her a speech or two. That is what we've come to hear. Why, look, it's Dr. Thorne. 
This is good of you. No, I just thought I owed it to Sir Roger to witness his folly. Well, stay and hear Moffat speak. He's trembling like jelly. Uh, Miss Dunstable, may I present Dr. Thorne? But I know all about you. Tell me, how is your charming niece? Mary is well, but she'd be surprised to find herself the topic of your conversation. Well, I'm an American, Dr. Thorne. We know no boundaries. Mr. Moffat, it's time. Is it really? Oh, my God, is it really? Where is your opponent? Oh, Scatcherd. I very much doubt he's been able to leave his bed. I pray that he's not. <sighs> Now, this, this Moffat, Mr. Moffat, hey, there he is now, look! What have you ever done for us, eh? Nothing, right? Now, listen, I know I may not look much like this picture that they've drawn of me, eh? But next to that fat, pimply item of unearned income, who drove down here, by the way, in a carriage? Ooh. With a smattering of lords and ladies. I mean, compared to him, I mean, I think I look all right, don't I, eh? <laughs> we know you, Sir Roger. You're one of us. I am indeed. <laughs> you know what? I came up the hard way, didn't I? Eh? I mean, I may be a rich man now, I may be a baronet, but... But when I started out, I had nought but a raw potato in my pocket to gnaw on if the hunger got too bad. So don't let him! Tell you that I don't know what it's like to be without, right? Thank you! <laughs> this is your moment, Mr. Moffat. It's time to deliver your speech. Good luck. I am a thorough paced reformer. A, th a thorough paced reformer. Snip. We've got the point. I believe very firmly in reform. Drat your reform, uh. Snippy. For what nation can pride themselves more on the rights granted to their citizens? The right to chuck this. Oh, oh Mr. Moffat, he isn't making much of a mark. You should have spent more time with the voters. You should have spent more money on the voters. Do you doubt our English democracy? Say something about their daughters. Praise their wives. Praise the town. Barchester's a fine town, but even a fine town can improve with reform. I rest my case. It is time to build on the achievement. <laughs> and push forward along the road to freedom! Tom, Tom, the tailor's son, stole the pig and away he ran, eh? <laughs> Look at the pampered swine. You couldn't fight for a pate sandwich, never mind a working man's vote, right? <laughs> Mr. Gresham. Mr. Gresham, how nice to see you. It's nice to see you too, Mary. But I mustn't disturb you at this hour. Is your uncle at home? Not yet. He went to the election and hasn't been back since. Mary, now that I am here, can I say how sorry I am for all this difficulty? It can't be helped, sir. But I hate to think that we've banished you. Beatrice is hardly speaking to us. <laughs> I must love her for that. Is it true she's engaged to Mr. Oriel? It is. It seems quick to me, but they're very determined. You know Beatrice. I certainly do. <laughs> There's a servant here from Boxall Hill, Miss Mary. He says Sir Roger's been struck down. The doctor's with him now, and he's sent a list of things he needs. I'll come at once. 
and ask Thomas to saddle my pony. I must go. I'm in the way. Please do let me know the news of Sir Roger. Why have you come? I couldn't leave Lady Scatcher to face this with no woman to lean on. She has servants. And would you like her to leave me to the servants in such a case? Here are the things you've asked for. What can I do? Bring me a kettle of hot water, a glass and a spoon. Is that your niece, Thorne? I don't believe I've ever seen her before. She's come to help Lady Scatchard. Oh. Louis arrived, yeah? Oh, his train must be in. He won't be long, I'm sure of it. <laughs> Thank you. To be beaten by four votes seems very hard. Well, there'll be a rematch before too long. Sir Roger did not look as if he would ever make it to Parliament. Would you run again, Moffat? I think not. <laughs> How do you do? <sighs> Miss Dunstable leaves in the morning. It must be tonight. That's a hard Frank, answer. do not let me down. I have promised your mama your family is saved. Isn't that what you want? Of course. Then into the breach with you. Just as soon as that tiresome young man relinquishes her. These people, they accuse us of toadying. But it seems to me they are the toadies. Oh, have I been accused of toadying? Ah, you know what I mean. Miss Gresham wishes to live well on my fortune. And her brother aims to buy back his estate with yours. That has put me in my place. Why don't you and I join forces? We could make a noise and no mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've cheered me up, Mr. Moffat. <laughs> I have refused Lord Porlock, but one proposal seemed a poor return for a whole week in the country. Now at least I can claim two. Two refusals? I'm afraid so. But be honest, Mr. Moffat, you want their breeding as much as they want your money. And you don't? No. I'd like a man who thinks like a gentleman, but whether he is one or not doesn't matter much to me. There is your moment. You, where are they? Upstairs, Sir Louis. In Sir Roger's room. Too fine for this kind of work, young lady. Mm -hmm. Louis! Oh, is it really you? Well, steady on, old girl. You yeah, don't squeeze me to death, or else you'll have no one left to keep you company. It is good of you to come. It's wonderful to see you. I say, that was pretty scrappy, Governor. Mm. Wouldn't you rather have something stronger? I would, Louis, boy. <laughs> Fetch him some brandy. I'll have a bottle with me if there's none here. <sighs> what difference can it make now, eh? True enough, I suppose. Hey, give me some while you're at it. Nursing standard's gone up. Miss Thorne is the doctor's niece. Come to help me. And that's good of you. Now, can you stay? Very well. If I'm not in the way. I doubt you could ever be in the way.
What did old Moffat want? He was curious about my marriage intentions. Do you have any? No immediate ones. You see, Mr. Gresham, I would rather be courted as a woman than a bank account. <sighs> I don't blame you. Although my aunt will be furious. She's set on our union. She thinks I'm proposing now. And will you propose? I, I like you much better than I thought I would. And I would love to save Greshamsbury. And if I were not too old for you, and if your heart were not already taken, and if, and if, and if. What should I say? Say that you proposed and I refused. You can't argue with that. But do not propose to me or anyone else but Miss Thorne. I fear I may be avoiding my duty. That is noble, but wrong. Your duty is to your queen and your god, I hope, but not to keeping your family in luxury. Your back is straight, your arms are strong. Make what you can of your life for yourself and Miss Thorne. We are the last ones downstairs. How pleased you will be to be rid of us all in the morning. Not at all. We're hoping to see a great deal more of you. If only that could be. Good night, Lady de Courcy, and thank you. What did she mean? Only that Greshamsbury will not be saved by the gold from the oil of Lebanon. Saying that you and only you know the name of Anne's eldest child. face was coming and go on my way without regret. Very well, I will grant your wish. What? She's there, in the firelight. Mary Thorne. That is the daughter of Anne Sketchin. What? This is this, this, this the truth? Miss Thorne. Can I do something for you? You can cheer me with your lovely face. And so you have done. If only every patient could be mended so easily. Would you accept the thanks of a dying man? And thank you, Thorn. You brought an angel into this house to make it easier for me to face what lies beyond the grave. Go to sleep now, Sketchard.
What a sleeping beauty scene is this? How's the governor? Come, Lady Scatchard. You were with him to the last, and that is the best a wife can hope for. Mary, take Lady Scatchard to her room. Sir Louis, although you are now the baronet, your father spoke of you to me and has left you under my charge. I hope you remember you can always turn to me for comfort in your sorrow at his end. Well, don't worry about me, Doctor. I've lived my whole life in the shadow of a great tree, and now that tree has fallen. Maybe it's my time in the sun at last. Can you stay here for your mother? Certainly not. I'll go to London from the funeral. You may send whatever money is due to me there. Gus. Gus, whatever is the matter? He's gone. He left this for me. Very devil. How dare he say you did not love him? Did you love him? Well, whether I did or not, it isn't very gentlemanly to say so. Gentlemanly? There is nothing gentlemanly about him. Moffat! Where is that devil, Moffat? He left straight after breakfast. Take my advice and let him go. She's better off without him. I'm back, Mama. Come in. Did you have a nice time at the Orioles, my dear? Caleb came in and we all had tea. Ah. You may call him Caleb to us. And of course, when you're on your own together. But don't use his name too freely. No, Mama. Who else was there? Mary was with us. Mary Thorne. She'd come in from Boxall Hill. We hadn't seen each other since my engagement, so Patience invited her. Patience Oriel may ask whom she wishes to the rectory, but you must support your brother. Surely when I am Mrs Oriel... When you are married, you may do as you wish, but you are not married yet. Did she talk of Frank? Yes. Does he write to her? No, he does not. Nor she to him. You're wrong, Mary Mama. I'm going up to change. Little minx. Beatrice? Mary Thorne. Oh, good afternoon, Lady Arabella. Is Dr. Thorne at home? <coughs> yes, he is. I'll show you through. <coughs> The Lady Arabella Gresham. This is an honour, Lady Arabella.
You're aware that Mary was this afternoon having tea with Beatrice and Miss Oriel. I don't believe I've congratulated you on Beatrice's engagement. <laughs> I say I must take you into my confidence, Dr. Thorne. You know very well how I worry about Frank. You are his mother. And we have all, with your assistance, contrived to separate him from dear Mary. With my assistance? I've given no such assistance, nor will I. Well, in sending her to stay with Lady Scatcherd, you agreed it were better they were kept apart. I did not agree. All I'm saying is that I must do my duty by my own children. Of course you must. And therefore I have called to say that I think it imprudent for Beatrice and Mary to spend time together. <gasps> you expect me now to disapprove of Mary's friendship with Beatrice? I'm very fond of Beatrice. I like their friendship. I'm glad of it. Suppose it should lead to renewed familiarity between Frank and Mary. I will say only this. If you wish to put a stop to their intimacy, then tell Frank, not me, and cease your persecution of Mary. Persecution? Is she persecuted when I have received her all her life as if she were my own daughter? Until it pleased you not to do so. You forget yourself. Good day, Dr. Thorne. Good day, Lady Arabella. I've asked them to bring the horse round. Though I know Louis will want something more handsome for you. <laughs> Don't listen to him. I love Firebird. Riding him is a gentle thing. But I'm afraid I've put you to a great deal of trouble. Not at all. You've helped me more than I can say over these past weeks. I've grown used to having you with me. But it's time you went back to your own life. Lady Scatchard! Oh, Louis's back. I wasn't expecting him. Oh, don't tell me she's putting you up on that damn thing again. And I'm very happy that she has. For a person that rides like you, Miss Thorne, for such a horsewoman. The Lady Scatchard, it's ridiculous. Don't talk so, Sir Louis, when I'm perfectly content. Well, I call it a crime against nature. Why, properly mounted, I'd back you against anything in Hyde Park. <laughs> Joe. This is Jonah, my new man. Every gentleman should have a man, you know. Joe, it's empty. Right, you are, Sir Louis, sir. I'm sorry, I can't seem to keep this steed still around your sorry excuse for a horse. You mustn't abuse my pet. But please, give your horse its head. A damn shame. Should you not have gone to your parents first with this news? No, because I believe it rests with you as to what I tell them. Surely not. Mary's owed a word on the matter, and so are they, but I've no part to play. Would you object to me as a suitor? Frank, you must consider carefully. You are a fine fellow, and any young woman would be lucky to have you. Well, then. It's not as simple as that. Greshamsbury has been your family seat for centuries. It would pain your father deeply were he to be the Gresham to lose it. You would have me follow my aunt's advice and marry Miss Dunstable. Not if you don't care for her. As a matter of fact, I like her very much. But as a friend. Not her, then. Believe me, it costs me nothing to disagree with Lady de Courcy on any given topic. Do you object to me personally? I would be proud to call you nephew, but I beg you. Consider your parents and what it means to them. I'm too far in, Doctor. My mother asked me not to see Mary, and I've kept to that, but it has altered nothing. Well, before you speak out, there is something you should know. It will not change my mind. Possibly not, but you should know it all the same. You've always heard that Mary is my niece, and so she is, my brother's daughter, but not quite according to the laws that normally govern these things. Go on. Forgive me, it's hard to go on. 
For when I do, I think I must destroy the happiness of one I love more than my own life. Well, surely the truth can't be so very bad, sir. It's bad enough by heaven. Uh, Mr. Mortimer Gaysby. Dawson, would you please send word to Mr. Gresham? You must be Miss Gresham <laughs> and Miss Beatrice. You've done your homework. I think you know my uncle, Lord de Courcy. I'm here as a lawyer on his recommendation. He told me Greshamsbury Park was a fine place, but it is even finer than he led me to believe. The question is, can it be saved? Beatrice, please. How can we be helpful, Mr. Gaysby? Shall I show you around the gardens while we wait for Papa? Would that be useful? Nothing could be more so. Good. Beatrice will tell him what we're up to. He certainly will. Shall we go? Lord de Courcy thinks I may be helpful. <laughs> Poor Papa will be grateful for any help he can get. Lady Scatcherd. You've caught me unprepared, Doctor. Let me see what I can offer you. Stay where you are. I had a message from your son. How is he? If he's still drinking too much, you must exert your influence. No, oh, Doctor. You have more say with him than I. And Miss Thorne, more than either of us. You cut a fine figure, Miss Thorne. I hope that means you'll be kinder about my trusty steed. It's true I'm a good judge of horse flesh. Nobody knows more about it than I. <laughs> I believe you. Nobody knows more about women, either. You will make me blush, Sir Louis. <laughs> Mary is a wonderful influence. But? I think she should go home. It's time. Doctor? Sir Louis, I wish I could persuade you to drink a little less. I'll give it thought, Doctor. Now, the Greshams be title deeds. You mustn't worry about that. Your lawyers know all there is to know. That's what my lawyers tell me that brings me here. See, I gather I have more than £90,000 tied up in the Greshamsbury estate. Something of that kind. The estate is a fine one. There's no risk. What if I need the money? But you don't. Well, everyone needs money, Doctor. You shall control everything in a short while, Sir Louis, and until then, I shall see that you are amply provided for. Hmm. And if I have a mind to live there? Perhaps, but I should have thought it rather large for a bachelor. Should you indeed? <laughs> now, Doctor, what would you think to my getting married? I should be delighted. It was your father's dearest wish that you should marry soon and well. As to that, I do not think you will quarrel with my choice. What would you say to Miss Mary Thorne? Well, wouldn't she be a good wife? Have you spoken to her? Yes and no. I've not exactly popped it to her, but I've been doing the civil, and if she's up to snuff, she'll know very well what I'm after. Well, Sir Louis, you do marry a great honor, of course. But might it not be sensible to wait until you know each other a little better? But you don't disapprove? I disapprove only of hasty choices, whether we talk of Greshamsbury or my niece. I know my advice is only binding on you for a little while longer, but I urge it just the same. With your permission, I will study the estate in detail. There may be sources of income as yet untapped. They need to be very lucrative. Or perhaps a new system of repayment that would keep Sir Louis content for a few years. I doubt it. I believe his man of business is an honorable fellow and will... It's a matter of opinion. He is the soul of honor and will do whatever he can. But when Sir Louis takes possession, that may not be much. They say Sir Louis drinks heavily. Not heavily enough. Sir Louis is a strong man, Mr. Gaysby. He may drink too much, but he's not going anywhere. Still, 
We may have room for manoeuvre. Frank, what are you doing here? I didn't expect to see you before the end of term. I have some business to discuss with you, but it can wait. No need. With your permission, Lady Arabella, I will rejoin you the day after tomorrow. We'll be delighted to see you. I should have introduced you. Mr. Gazeby has come to advise us. As to whether there is any way to rescue the estate. Are you leaving, Mr. Gazeby? Have they ordered you a carriage? I think I'll walk. It's a nice day and the country air is very sweet after the soot of London. You make me quite envious. <laughs> I would ask you to accompany me if it were not impertinent. But I should like to learn more about Greshamsbury. I'll come if it will be useful. Will you wait while I fetch a coat? Of course. <laughs> Leaving, Mr. Gazeby. When will we see you again? I shall be back on Thursday. In the meantime, Miss Gresham will walk me to the station so that I can learn more of the estate and its dependents. What a tireless worker she is. Shall we go? Perhaps Miss Beatrice would like to accompany us. I don't think so. Nobody knows more about the village than Augusta. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Good day. You intend to do what? To go to Boxall Hill and to ask for Mary's hand in marriage. Oh, Frank. Frank, she has done all she could to catch you. Mother, you wrong her cruelly. <gasps> you wicked boy. To call me cruel when you know what we need to survive. Mother, I shall hate Greshamsbury if I hear one more word of what I have to do to save it. So instead you'll see us turned out to beg our bread by the roadside. It has not quite come to that. Oh, Frank. Do you wish me to die of a broken heart? Mother, I'd love for you to be happy. Then if you wish to see me happy ever again, marry money! No! I'd have made a fool of myself in that way if it had not been for Miss Dunstable's good taste, and I will not do it again. Which makes you an ungrateful and unnatural child. Mother... Out of my way! This is not sensible, Frank. And there is more. Mary may not know it, but her birth is unsuited to your wife and the mother of your children. So Dr. Thorne told me when I went to him this afternoon. But it makes no difference. Should it? I don't recall any talk of Moffat's birth or Miss Dunstable's. What else did Thorne say? He told me to consider it carefully and talk it over with you and my mother before I gave Mary my word. Did he indeed? Well, I should have expected no less of him. Very well. But how do you mean to support her? By working. Many men do. Then finish the year at Cambridge for my sake. Take your degree. I will speak to Mary. can manage this, my dear. I like to help. It must be hard for you, but these clothes will be a blessing to some poor families. What are you doing in my room? We're sorting your late father's clothes to give to the poor. Burn them for all I care. You don't mean that. I mean everything I say. Just as I mean for you to go and let Miss Thorne and I have a moment together. But, Sir Louis, I... Go, please, Lady Scatcherd. We shouldn't be alone together, Sir Louis. It is not quite right. Well, you see, Miss Thorne, I think it is exactly right. I want us to be alone together for, for the rest of our lives. 
If you take my meaning. Sir Louis, of course I'm flattered. Don't say flattered, say... say delighted. But I'm afraid things can never be as you wish. Why not? Are you engaged elsewhere? No. But I'm not free. You have led me on, Miss Thorne. You have led me on most wickedly. He has fallen victim to her wiles. What is the point of talking like that, Mama? You think everything is lost, then? Do I think Frank will be true to Mary Thorne? Yes, I do. But I love him for it. Well, I do not love him for it. And I will not quit the field quite yet. sore eyes you are and lord knows my eyes have been sore since i last saw you uh oh <laughs> oh, oh what would they say you forget i'm a man now not to me master frank you may think what you like you will always be my little master frank lady scatchard you forget yourself <laughs> let mr gresham breathe nurse master frank when he was a boy louis i seem to recall something of the sort but you're lady scatchard now all that is behind you it may be but at the time we were kept alive by the charity of master frank's parents without the home and wage they offered me i don't know how we'd have managed we two. Oh, really where was the governor your father was away for some years he would have liked to have come home, but he could not. I'm very grateful to Lady Scatchard for remembering me. As if I could forget. <gasps> Look at your hair. How dark you are. Oh, it doesn't curl the way it used to. Enough, Lady Scatchard. Enough. I've come to see Miss Thorne, Sir Louis. Oh, she's out riding. Go straight ahead from the front door and follow that path. You'll see her. What does he want with her? Oh, they're old friends, the Greshams and the Thorns. But we Scatcherds are not old friends of the Greshams, are we? What's got into you, Louis? I'll make them wish they'd been more courteous to the Scatchards before I'm finished. What has Master Frank ever done to harm you? You fool. He's doing it now. Mr. Gresham. <coughs> yes, it is me, Mary. I've come to pay my respects. You must have thought me uncivil to stay away for so long. Not at all. I didn't even know you were back at Greshamsbury. And I came to Boxall to be out of the way. Why should you want to be out of the way? I had my reasons. Have you had news of me? I have. But I've been taken up with Lady Scatcher's business. Dealing with Sir Roger's death, I've had no time to think of myself. When have you ever thought of yourself? I feel so high up here. Would you help me down? <clears throat> yes.
Mary. Do you remember when we were last together? I remember you were very foolish. Then I've come to repeat my folly. For all the months we've been apart, nothing has altered me. Mr. Gresham, there are many reasons why I'm not worthy of you. If you knew them all... I do. Or at least I know what you think I am ignorant of. Your uncle told me all about your birth. That is why you must not think ill of your mother for opposing me. Any mother would have done the same. Mary, if you'll tell me that I'm nothing to you, then I'll go away and I'll leave you in peace and my mother can be easy. Just say the words. You do not love me. You cannot love me, and I'll be gone. <laughs> then Mary, darling Mary, will you please be my own wife? For the truth of it is simple. I love you with my whole heart. Oh, Frank. <laughs> We're looking for Lady Scatcherd. She's only stepped out for a moment, Miss Thorne. I'll tell her ladyship you're waiting for her. Is this her sitting room? It is. The only place she was ever allowed her own way, poor thing. Now, when you break the news to your father, you must also tell him that you will take your degree whatever happens. He thought you would say that. Mr. Gresham and I are old friends. We always understand each other. And will you honour us with your presence at dinner, Mr. Gresham? You're very kind, Sir Louis, but I have to get back. And what about you, Miss Thorne? Will you be joining us, my mother and I? Might I be excused? I'm tired, so I'll ask for a tray in my room. I've still some packing left to do. Oh. Well, I don't think I can allow that. And a lot on, not on your last night at Boxall Hill. You may have to. <laughs> Careful, Mr. Gresham. Well, we are not at Greshamsbury now. I give the orders at Boxall Hill. No one gives orders to Miss Thorne. Not at Boxall Hill or Greshamsbury. Now, I should like to know Greshamsbury better. I have a, an interest in the place, you know. Yes, I do know. Oh, I'm sorry to have kept you. Oh, but you're not going. I'm afraid I must, Lady Scatcherd. Goodbye, Mary. I'll see you when you get home. Sir Louis? You frightened him off, Louis. Now, let's go upstairs, Miss Thorne, and I'll help you pack. He'll be a lot less cocky when you boot him out, Sir Louis. When he's left on the roadside outside his own gates, begging for a bit of crust. You're right, Joe. He'll be much less cocky then. Now, here's the thing. What is it? A letter from Sir Louis Scatcher's London man of business. What does he want? Sir Louis plans another visit to Boxall Hill. Apparently, he wants to take a look at Greshamsbury. He cannot do anything without your permission, surely? Not yet. 
But his 30th birthday is in a matter of weeks, and the fact is he already owns the house and much of the estate. So he'll force them to sell up? Or buy out their interest, which he could do between luncheon and tea and not notice the difference. You cannot refuse to receive him? No. He must come here. I'll write and invite him. It'll give me a chance to put the case on the Gresham's behalf. You'd better warn the squire. Will you walk up this afternoon? I wonder. I haven't been there since you were banned. Good day, Doctor. Thank you. To Thorn. Dr. Thorne. Won't you come in? Yes, I hesitate only because I shouldn't like to give the impression that all is forgiven and forgotten. For me, there is nothing to forgive. But we couldn't say the same of your wife. Then why are you here? Sir Louis Scatcherd is on his way back to Greshamsbury. He wants to take a look at the house and the estate. Does he? With a view to what? He may have a design to live here. And you cannot stop him? Not for long. It's his 30th birthday in two months' time. So, we have come to the end at last. Well, I just wonder if there isn't a chance of appealing to his better nature. Does he have one? Well, who knows? <laughs> I have some sympathy for him. I do not think that being the son of the great Sir Roger Scatcherd was the easiest start on earth. I may yet be able to win him round. So I've invited him to stay with me in Greshamsbury. We're clutching at straws, Thorn. But I suppose you had better bring him up for dinner. You mean I should accompany him? Of course. I doubt it, of course, for Lady Arabella. She wouldn't be happy to think I was standing here now. Why would he want this house when he's got that great gothic pile? I think he has a notion that Greshamsbury Park is a more gentlemanly place than Boxall Hill. And he is a great gentleman, is Sir Louis Scatcherd. Who are those for? Why are you in Greshamsbury? Are you sorry to see me? I never could be. But your exam's less than a month away. You should be working harder than ever. Don't worry. I'm only here for the dinner tonight. My father wants me to greet Sir Louis Scatcherd. I'm glad the doctor will be present. I hope he will be. It's not quite decided. Beatrice asked for you to join us. But it may be safer to focus on Sir Louis for now and... You and Mama another night. I heartily agree. <laughs> Here you are, Mrs. Thompson. Ooh. Don't worry about the plates and bowls. I'll be back to collect them. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have a note for your uncle. And with one inside of it for Sir Louis from Mama. That's very sensible. Well, Mr. Barnes, I'll be back for the plates tomorrow. Thank you very much. Are there any wedding plans yet? Yes, and they're all secret. Even the date? <laughs> we'll choose a day not long after you take your exams. My uncle will talk to Lady Arabella. If it were up to me, we'd elope to Gretna Green and be much less trouble. That's why we won't leave it up to you. Oh, look. Your guest has arrived. I'd better go. If people knew the sacrifices I have been called upon to make, there would be a new gospel dedicated to my sufferings. Still, if Sir Louis can feel himself befriended by the Gresham family, it would only do good. 
Mr. Gaysby has been inspiring us for our efforts at dinner. He seems very convinced of Sir Louis's dominion over us. And I'm afraid he is quite right. And there's the gong. Time to prepare for battle. What can he be doing up there? Dressing, I suppose. He's been doing it since he got here. Perhaps he's gone to sleep. Maybe you should go up and wake him. If you wish. I'll take the letter. Thorne! There you are, Thorne. I'm just on my way down. I was only coming up to see you've got everything you want. Here's a message for you from Lady Arabella Gresham. She repeats her invitation for tonight. I am going, even if they can't pay me the money they owe me. Are you invited to dinner tonight, too? I am. I hadn't meant to accept, but I've decided I should. Mm. Now, <clears throat> where's Miss Thorne? In the drawing room. I'm looking forward to greeting her. Ah, Miss Thorne. Je suis enchanté. Where is my uncle? He's gone up to change. He's going with you then? Mm. I am glad. You know, I wonder if I might take advantage of his absence. Oh, you see, I've thought about you. While I've been in London, I've thought about you a good deal. We've thought about you. I wonder if you might reconsider. No, it would not be the first time the lady has changed her mind. Sir Louis. Now, I have offered you a great position, Miss Thorne. I know it, and I'm honoured, Sir Louis, but you see, things are... Right, are you ready? The fly's at the door. I am pleased you're going, Uncle. I know you will both enjoy it. I'm sure I will. And it's time I saw the place. Fun to live there. Oh, Sir Louis, I pray you won't be hasty. <laughs> of course you would say that when you so favour Mr Frank Gresham. I love them all. And I think you will love them too as you get to know them. Is that what you think, Doctor? It's what I hope. Well, well, we'll find out by the end of tonight, won't we? Mm. Sir Louis Scatcherd and Dr. Thorne. Dear God, it is worse than I thought. Thorne, you are the best fellow breathing. I have hardly deserved this. Thank you. I don't hurry your hellos to the doctor, Mr. Gresham. I am only a baronet, after all. <laughs> we are honoured to have you here this evening, Sir Louis. I was curious. We have never met before, but... I've often read your name in my accounts. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Lady Arabella. I hope I find you well. Not really. Allow me to introduce. Good evening, my lady. How do you do? Tolerably well. Thank you, Sir Louis. I should have paid a call on you sooner, but I've been in London. Oh, 
car. Was your ladyship in London this season? No, not this year. Circumstances have kept us at home. Now, I am very sorry. To be short of funds must be so distressing for a person like your ladyship. Let's hope things are mending for both our sex. <laughs> Do you hunt, Sir Louis? It depends what I'm hunting for. <laughs> <laughs> I gather you and your sister are both unmarried, Miss Gresham. Well, my sister is engaged to Mr. Oriel, but I suppose I am. I can see I shall have to watch out. Watch out for what? An unmarried girl in pursuit of a rich baronet. <laughs> We've needed you, Sir Louis, to shake us up in our country ways. I think I saw your ladyship today. In the village, taking a ride. I never ride. In your, uh, your one-horse carriage, I mean. I was delighted with the way you whipped him up round the corner. <laughs> a good-looking country round here. Yes, very. Now, I hardly know which I like best. You know, this or, or my own place of Boxall Hill. You have the advantage here in trees, but... Well, as to the house, you'd hardly know the place now, Lady Arabella, if you haven't seen it since my governor bought it. Now, how much do you think he spent? Well, guess, my lady. I never guess. Hmm. I'll tell you, because I like to be precise. It cost £22,419, four shillings and eightpence. It's a tidy sum. Hey, my lady, isn't it a tidy sum? Lady Arabella? It certainly is a tidy sum. You know, you parsons have the luck. You get the beauty and the money too. Not too much of the latter in this case. <laughs> He's been a fool. He's muddled his matters most uncommonly. Now, what do you think he owes me? Well, have a guess. Give me a sum. I must go. Well, the parson seems a bit peaky. <laughs> Maybe he's not too sure about marrying your sister. <laughs> but he's got his own money. Hasn't he? Yeah, you know, she's short of a bob or two. He, he has more than his bare living. Yes, Sir Louis. Enough to survive the radicals when they shut the church down. <laughs> no land, though, I suppose. There's nothing like land. Is there, Squire? Nothing like dirty acres. No, while I've got your ear, Squire. Don't let's get bogged down in lawyers like Mr. Gazeby here. I beg your pardon. <clears throat> no, I, I only mean that we're all tottered now. Squire, I have you down in my books for near on a hundred thousand pounds, and I... Will you hold your tongue, sir? <laughs> hold my tongue? Don't tell me to hold my tongue. No, I am not the fool you think me, Doctor. Or are you, Mr. Gresham? I know what I'm owed, and I know when I can call it in. But down to the last penny. Perhaps we should join the ladies. No, he cannot join the ladies, not in this state. The rest of you go. I'll wait for the fly and take Sir Louis home. Well, I'm always happy to see the ladies. Please apologize to Lady Arabella. What for? What's the matter with her? You know, I think I'll go through. No, sir, you will stay here. Well, what right do you speak to me in such a tone? Mr. Gresham, please go to the others. I knew what he was, and I am heartily ashamed for bringing him here. Thorn, we will wait for the fly together. And don't worry, I've seen a tipsy man before tonight. You 
You should get started. The train will be in at three o'clock. Take Beatrice with you. How can Aunt de Courcy help? Frank's mind is made up. He won't be talked out of her now. I agree with you. There is no further point in talking to Frank. Then why is she coming? Mayn't I entertain my sister-in-law? Lady de Courcy is full of ideas. Isn't she just? And doesn't she like to share them? Perhaps we ought to set her on Sir Louis. <laughs> oh, don't speak that man's name in my presence. Where is he now? Boxhall Hill. Beatrice says he never went back to London after that frightful dinner. How does she know? Mary Thorne told her. There's another name I had rather not hear spoken. Honestly, Mama, what were the Thorns and all the Scatcheds? We shall have to talk in a dumb show if you keep this up. <laughs> have you ordered the carriage? I am glad to see you, Aunt, but I don't see quite what you can do. I may be useful, you never know. What about you, Alexandrine? Are you going to be useful too? My cousin is making a mistake, but I have not much to add to it. When is Frank coming back from Cambridge? Later today. He's finished there. Now I understand the urgency. Can you explain what you mean? All in good time. Ah, here we are. Oh, I don't know what to say to him. He's in such a rage against the Greshams, Master Frank in particular. He rants and raves and drinks worse than ever. I'm sorry to hear it. He can harm the Greshams if he's a mind to. I fear he has. He's instructed that scoundrel Winterbones to sue Mr Gresham for the money. And it's to begin the day after his birthday. Do we know the cause of his fervour to be rid of us when he has no need of the money? That's where I feel some responsibility. I encouraged Mary to stay at Boxall Hill when she'd been dismissed from this house. I fear it allowed Sir Louis to... To fall in love with her. He's quite as passionate in his desire to make her his wife as Lady Arabella was to be rid of her. Then the fault is shared. We were the ones who made the village uncomfortable for poor Mary. And now we are to have our just desserts. How he must hate us. Well, certainly his anger against Frank is very great. What's this? Ah, oh, my boy, you arrive at a melancholy hour. It would seem that on the very day of Sir Louis Scatcherd's birthday, he will call in the debt. But what has that to do with me? If he wants his money back, what am I to do with that? It is not quite so simple. He's in love with my niece. I cannot blame him. He thought his offer would be irresistible. And now the chance to render his rival penniless and landless is equally compelling. I see. Then clearly I must call on Sir Louis Scatchard. I don't believe there'd be anything to gain. Why, Doctor? You say yourself that he's in love with Mary, and if any man living can understand that, it is me. If you insist, then I'll go with you. But I do not share your optimism. I hear Frank and Mary are to marry at once. So Frank says. He's quite set on it. Has Lady Arabella begun to accept the situation? <sighs> no. She must have come round at last. You don't know my mother. They cannot change their minds now. She cannot hope they will. She'll hope they will until they leave the church. <laughs> Is there no one who might convert Lady Arabella? Not Mr. Gresham? Papa is the very last man who could convince her of anything. Mr. Gaysby has a way with Mama. Really? Oh, yes. Mr. Gaysby is quite marvellous at managing her. He's blessed with such tact. So everything in the garden is rosy.
Countess de Corsi and the Lady Arabella Gresham. Is your uncle not at home, child? He sent a message. He has gone to Boxall Hill. It is just as well, since it is to you we wish to speak. You know how fond we are of you. Mary, can we not put an end to this ill feeling? It all depends on one thing, you know, and one thing only. Miss Thorne, do you consider yourself engaged to my nephew? Yes, I do. Let me ask you this. Do you seriously imagine you and he can ever be husband and wife? Yes. So you are set on holding poor Frank to a word casually given but now as binding as hoops of steel. And this family must lose its home and position. And Frank is to forfeit the future that he has been brought up to enjoy. And I suppose you dare call that love. We both know Frank thinks he is honor bound to throw away his future. Only you can give him back what his life might have been by withdrawing from the field. You know what I say is true. Is the woman who prevents a man from ruining himself the one who truly loves him? Or the woman who holds on to him through thick and thin, cost what it may? How dare you come here without an invitation? I invited them, Louis. At least I'm always pleased to see them both. It's my fault. I wanted to come. Why? Because I cannot bear to be the cause of my family's ruin. You're not the cause. Your father's debts are the cause. You would not treat him with such harsh measures, were it not? Say it. Master Frank is only trying... Say it! He thinks your decision may have something to do with the fact that he is marrying my niece. <sighs> well, why shouldn't he marry your niece? Or you know, any other girl who's not afraid of life with a beggar. I don't see why we must fall out. Is she not? When she takes the nothing that you offer her over there, the, 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 everything that I laid at her feet. Miss Thorne appreciated the care you took of her, Louis. Silence! You unnatural woman! Who prefers this? this wolf cub of your own child. Indeed, I do not. And you, Dr. Thorne, my guardian, who was so very anxious to guide me, but who couldn't control the sneer on your face when I, when I told you of my plans. I didn't sneer. I did not think you would suit each other. Not suit. To take the niece of a country doctor and make her the equal of, 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 of any lady in the county, not suit. I'm sure Mary was very conscious of the honor you paid her. Oh, was she? But she and I, we've grown up together. We've known each other since we were children. Oh, well, you've not known me. Not any of you. And there's no Gresham or Thorne who would call themselves a friend of Louis Scatchard. So Louis, there is no man living 
who understands more clearly the pain you're feeling. No, 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 no pity, no pity. I, I forbid it. I, I will not let you pity me. I, I will not. Go fetch my horse. Right you are, sir. Go, come back. You're in no state to walk the Lester ride. I warned you not to stop me. Now look what you've made me do. Oh, my Louis. <laughs> I'll find her and get a proper answer. <laughs> 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 Mama is back from her errand with Aunt de Corsi, but they are still very tight-lipped about it. I don't at all know why we were sent for. I thought the question of Frank and Miss Thorne was settled. Well, I cannot help you. Mama has been most mysterious. No doubt we'll find out soon enough. <laughs> I might as well just say it. Mr. Gaysby's asked me to marry him. He came to me yesterday evening, before dinner. He told me he felt the warmest love, the most profound admiration, and the deepest respect. Did he? Indeed. He was quite honest. He owned that his ambition was to ally himself with a family above his own rank as a way of advancing himself. He wishes to enter Parliament. Does he? I never thought Mr. Gaysby was in need of a wife. I never thought that before this moment. I think we should be happy. And were he to enter Parliament, there'd be no end of things for me to do. Interesting things, worthy things. It would be a full life. I'm sure it would. Although I would not have thought the wife of a politician condemned to watch him scramble up the greasy pole, much to be envied. So you do not approve? Augusta, think. Do you honestly believe Papa would receive an estate agent for a nephew? Lord de Courcy's always been very kind to me. And he is fond of you. But there are limits for a man used to the etiquette of the court. You mean because Mr. Gaysby works for his living? You say he's an honourable man, and so he is. But so is Mr. Scraggs the butcher, or the man who cleans the billiard room. They're clearly not dishonourable. Does that mean they're fit to dine at the high table? So I must refuse him. My dear, I did not agree with Mr Moffat, but he at least possessed a large fortune. What have we here? I know what I must do. Thank you, Alexandrina. Take a horse from the stables, ride to my house, tell Mary what's happened. I'll bring Lady Scatchard home with me in the carriage and then I'll send it on to Gresham Spring. Well, she wants to leave Sir Louis. He will not be Sir Louis then, but only a shell of what he once was. You think there's no hope? There's none whatsoever. His lung was punctured in the fall. His struggle will soon be over. Sad death to end a sad life. I wonder if his words were true and I failed in my duty towards him. You did your best. Sir Louis Scatchard was damaged beyond repair before you laid eyes on him. Even so, I should have done more. I could have done more. <coughs> Stop, dear! Come quickly! Go, tell Mary everything. <coughs> Dr. Thorn! Rest, Sir Louis, I beg you. <coughs> Will you do something for me? I'll do anything you ask. Only this. Please tell Miss Thorne. Uh, I, I hope I didn't offend her. She thought me a buffoon. I'm sure she did not. She did, she did. But tell her. I didn't mean to be offensive. If I misjudged, it was not deliberate. Please don't talk. Save your strength. 
but for what? Dr. Thorne, for what? I am Lady Scatchard. Before you go up, I want to take advantage of her absence to talk about something which may be painful. Oh, I'm in so much pain now. A little more will make no difference. Very well. I hope you can forgive me. Do you know the next heir to Sir Roger's fortune? No, Sir Roger never told me. You know his sister Anne had a daughter before she left England? Of course I knew. She wanted me to have her, but that was before I went to nurse Master Frank and I was struggling to feed myself and Louis. Do you know what happened to the baby? She died. So I'm told Sir Roger. Huh. to Anne's child for luck. I, Anne Scatchard, give my baby daughter Mary into the charge of her late father's brother, Dr. Thomas Thorne of Greshamsbury. But that was... Me. I'm the man that gave the child shelter. Sir Roger and Sir Louis heiress. <sighs> Is Mary son? Mary? Oh, but did Sir Roger know it? Yes. He knew she was his niece. He gave her his blessing. Then I think I can bear the pain. Janet, where is my uncle? Please, let's say no more. Dear Lady Scatcher, I'm. So happy to see you here. Everything's ready if you'd like to go upstairs. Janet will take you, and I'll be in to say good night. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. If you'd like to come this way, Lady Scatchard. Was it very terrible? It was pitiable. It was more pitiable than you could know. I bore him no ill will. May he rest in peace. And now we must do everything we can for his mother. Mm. Uncle. I had two visitors while you were away. From Lady Arabella Gresham and Lady de Courcy. The Countess de Courcy in this house, heavens. I've decided to give Frank up. What? Please don't argue with me. I was persuaded I was being selfish and holding on to him. My dear, Lady Arabella and Lady de Courcy are a pair of snobbish, selfish old crowns. That may be true, but that does not make everything they say untrue. 
When will you tell him? I told him this afternoon, while you sent him with news of Sir Louis. How did he take it? He refused to accept it. But that will pass. And he will be free to do his duty. I doubt that. I won't change. I think you will. Come on. I'll take a new look at things tomorrow. Hmm? So, Sir Louis is dead and we are cast adrift again. But I pity him. That's not my only reason for coming here this morning. Lady Arabella and her sister-in-law paid a call on Mary yesterday. Oh, dear. Before I tell you the substance of their conversation... It is not hard to guess. Maybe not, but will you answer me one thing? What is your real objection to the union of Frank and Mary? Simple. What would they live on? So if that difficulty were got over, you would not refuse your consent because of Mary's birth? I do not believe that I am entitled to refuse my consent anyway. But if you are asking, then no. You did not, after all, object to Miss Dunstable. There is no point in pretending that money does not wash away many sins. Well, then I am happy to tell you that Mary's sins are washed quite clean. What? The hundred thousand pounds owing on the Gresham's... Don't remind me. ...belongs to Mary Thorne. So does Boxhall Hill, and much, much else besides. I would say that her fortune is approaching half a million pounds. I don't understand what you're telling me. Mary is now in possession of Sir Roger Scatcherd's money? She is. Her mother was Sir Roger's sister. <sighs> you must tell Lady Arabella. Say I sent you in to treat her, and then tell her the news. I will. <sighs> This is very surprising. Mr. Gresham asked me to look in and see how you are. Please do not trouble yourself. I'm sure you have more than enough to concern yourself with. Lady Arabella is very tired. I spoke to Mary before I came out. Oh, yes. She's taken your advice and given Frank up. She has. Really? Then, Dr. Thorne, we have no further need to quarrel. Thank you for this news. Thank you. What a sensible girl. She is a credit to you. I confess I am sad they're not to marry. Maybe. But Mary's good sense has taken her to the right decision. No, I'm sad because... I should have liked Greshamsbury to be saved. I do not understand you. To me. To you. Anne Scatchard was your mother. You are Sir Roger's niece and Sir Louis's first cousin. <laughs> but do you mean Boxall Hill is mine? Boxall Hill and Greshamsbury and plenty more besides. Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Does Frank know? I've told the squire and Lady Arabella, so he'll know by now. A carriage has arrived, Doctor. That's sooner than I was expecting. 
I suppose Lady Arabella is eager to make amends. How shall I face her? You don't have to see her at all. Oh, yes, I do. Dear, dear Mary. How do you do, Lady Arabella? <sighs> my daughter, my child, my Frank's own bride. Can you forgive me my anxiety over my son? Lady Arabella, what... I know how it is. You judge me that I fought like a tigress protecting her cubs, but would you not fight to defend your child from the storm? Very possibly. Shall I rend my garments and throw myself down into the dust to show you my remorse? Mama, if you would stop your gushing for a moment, I believe Mary is entitled to a word on the subject. But I wish to make... Hush, my dear. Frank is quite right. Mary, we have behaved very badly towards you in the past, and there is no need for you to pretend otherwise. That's all over now. I will not criticise a mother for loving her son but I hope you will not criticize me for loving him too. Of course, now that we are no longer engaged. What? We broke it off after you begged me to do so. Oh no, th that was before. Frank, what are you thinking of? I order you to marry this charming girl. Uh, you order me to marry Mary, Mama. As I always would have if only circumstances had been different, which they now so happily are. Quiet, Belle. You have got off lightly. Let us leave Mary and Frank to settle things between them. I'll see you out. But I... I don't understand. Are they not to marry? Will you follow your mother's orders? Very willingly, if you'll allow it. I had intended to go away, to help you forget me. That would never have worked. I should have pursued you to the ends of the earth. But now I won't have to. No. Now you won't have to. was an excellent wedding breakfast, Lady Arabella. We wanted to do things properly on this happiest of days. And so you did. How lovely Mary looks. A vision of youth and beauty. Oh, thank you. Frank, we expect to see you both at Corsi Castle the moment you come back from your wedding journey. Hmm? We shall be there, Uncle. And they have a wedding of their own to celebrate. Who's getting married? You, Borlock. No, Alexandrina. She is to marry Mr. Gaysby in December. I hope you don't regret your chance to enter on the arm of the groom. Certainly not, Dr. Thorne. I'm happy where I am. When will you return to America? You think I should be done with my husband hunting then? Is it hunting or drag hunting? What do you mean? With you as the lure, I sense plenty of excitement in the chase, but no chance of a kill at the end of it. Well, you prefer to catch your quarry, Dr. Thorne. I prefer a proper resolution, Miss Dunstable, yes. 
I hope you won't hold that against me. On the contrary, Dr. Thorne. Quite on the contrary. a happy ending for you, Dr. Thorne. Any number of happy endings, just as you like. And I'm glad of it. Now, what do you say we take a turn around the floor ourselves, Miss Dunstable? I should be delighted, Dr. Thorne. <laughs> <laughs>